Hello, and welcome back to Create Astral, where last episode, we got ourselves set up a couple of our first Create machines, and dug out a nice big area for a base. I haven't finished decorating in here, just because I know I want to use Deep Slate for the walls, so I think that'll look nice. The bad news is that Deep Slate is all the way down at the bottom of the world, and there's no way I'm hand digging all of that out manually. What I'd like to do instead is set up another one of these mining drill cards, uh, but instead of it going into a circle this time, uh, it's just going to go straight. We're missing one piece though, and that is the deployer, and this is what's going to place the rails back down as it goes along. Luckily, it's a little easier to make these in this pack. All we need to do is find some rubber. To get that, we'll need to pick up one of these tree taps. And then if we find one of these rubber trees, we can just right click wherever there's sap and pick up some of these. And I also want to pick up a couple of these saplings so we can farm these later on. For now, we can throw all this sap into a basin with a mixer and this will turn it into rubber. And there we go. These can be used to make a rubber hand. Then to make the deployer, we'll need to grab one of these polished rose quartz, uh, which does take a quartz. The good news is we don't even have to go to the nether to grab some of this. Uh, we can just throw some diorite into a millstone. Now if we throw this onto here and give it a rail filter, it should start placing these as it moves along. And then we've also got a plow back here to pick up the rails as it goes. And I've thrown a barrel on here just for storage with a couple of extra rails in it. And all we should have to do now is connect this all with super glue. And there we go, if we turn this on and throw a cart down, I didn't really think how to get in there to put that on. Here we go, I made some extra headroom. Now we can give this a shove and it should start going. I'm gonna let this run for a little bit uh, to get some cobble deep slate out of it. And hopefully we can get some other ores too. We've got a good amount of deep slate out of this now, uh, so we're going to go ahead and use this to decorate our base. And here we go, that's pretty much the main room finished here. I would like to put in an elevator right here though, so we don't keep having to use these stairs here. And of course, I picked the most inconvenient wall to do this on. Here we go, it was kind of painful to clear all that water out, but I finally got out a nice big area for our elevator here. To get this elevator working, we're going to use one of these rope pulleys. Uh, right next to it, we've got a gear shift, and we're just powering this with a couple of water wheels over there. Then if we just throw a lever on this and flip it on, the rope pulley will turn on and go down and pick up the actual andesite casings themselves. We just have to attach all of these with glue. And if we flip this lever back up, it should pull up the elevator. There we go. Now to actually set this up so that we can use it from both ends, I believe if we use one of these powered toggle latches, uh, we can use a button to turn this on and that will permanently turn on the gear shift until we press another button down at the bottom there. We just have to find a way to get the redstone all the way up there. We could use one of these redstone links, uh, but that takes brass and we don't really have access to that yet. So I think we're just going to do the old fashioned redstone torch way instead. Here we go. Now if we hit the button from down here, it should send us up. There we go. And this will work both ways, so if the elevator is ever down there and we need to call it, we can just hit that button and it will come up for us. There we go, now we have a very nice way of getting in and out of our base. I could honestly do this all day, it's so satisfying. Now that we've got a good start on our base, I think it's time we start looking at automating some stuff. Specifically though, these four ingots are the ones that we're going to be automating today. Before we get those set up though, I'd like to find a way to automate andesite alloy so we can get our create machines a lot easier. 
I'm gonna repurpose our... Mm, mm. I'm gonna repurpose our little tunnel machine here to create a tunnel so we can have a bunch of rooms for the different things we're gonna be automating. While that's going, we can cook up some of this grout we have, though. Before we can set up our melter, though, we need to grab a couple of fluid tanks. And these take copper casings, uh, which we have to do a little recipe sequence for. Luckily, it's not too expensive. It just takes rubber and some copper sheets. And we can just throw an andesite casing on there, and it will turn into a copper casing for us. And here we go. There's our melter. The first thing I'm going to do with this is upgrade my stone pickaxe to an iron one. I've been using this stone one for way too long. It deserves an upgrade. Here we are. The other thing I want to get is one of these tinkers anvils. And the easiest way to do this is going to be to get three blocks of bronze. And there we are. Now we can use this to craft up a hammer. And this is going to allow us to mine in a 3x3 three three area instead of just 1x1. One one. And I think I'm also going to make this out of bronze just because it's very easy to get right now. There we go. There's our hammer. And we can also make one of these broad axes. And this should allow us to chop down trees in one swing. Yeah, this makes life so much easier. There is one more thing I'm going to craft up before going to automate some of these ingots here. And that is one of these toolboxes. And this is just going to allow me to store some of these create machines we have. And help me keep my inventory kind of clean. The first part of automating andesite alloy is going to be super easy. Uh, we just need to make another andesite generator here. And actually, if we use a triple compressed andesite here, uh, this cobblestone generator will produce andesite 100% of the time. Uh, whereas before, I think it was doing it like one every three times or something like that. Uh, but this is going to be way better. Besides that, I basically have the same setup, just a drill and then a fan behind it. Uh, and that will push it into this chute and onto this bell and into this basin. The next thing we're going to need for andesite is clay. To set the clay up, I've just got a nice tall millstone pillar here. And at the top, there's a cobblestone generator. Uh, so that will turn the cobblestone into gravel and then the gravel into sand. And then down here, we've got a fan, which will wash all that sand into clay. To set up the iron, we just have basically the same setup as the clay, just with one millstone. And this is going to produce gravel, which will then wash, and that will come all the way along onto this belt. Washing gravel produces both iron and flint, so we just have these two storage units locked here, uh, so that they'll only pick up those two. The flint's just going to drop straight into the lava, uh, but then the iron is going to go all the way into this basin here. And that should be all three ingredients that we need in order to automate andesite. The recipe for andesite actually produces a liquid, uh, so we just have a seared faucet here in the front. And if we power this on with a lever, it should just automatically start spilling out uh, whenever it makes some. I believe that's everything we need though, we just have to power this all. To set up power for this, I'm just going to use a windmill, quick and easy. There we go, all we should have to do now is connect all of these up with gears. So I've changed things around just a little bit. I've discovered that you can use these crude storage units and have them like automatically input and output items out of these create machines. And these basically just act as filters for all the different items we need. Uh, so we no longer have to use belts uh, in between all of the machines. Plus it just makes everything look nice and compact too. I think it's great. I'll kind of go over how this works though since I changed everything around. Uh, up on the right side here, we have a cobblestone generator, and that goes into a millstone for gravel, and then this one goes into another millstone for sand, and then it will get washed into clay. And I'll show you too, on these storage units, you can lock them uh, so that it will only hold sand. And then if you click on the wrench here, you can configure the input and output slots so that they automatically input uh, and output into the drawers themselves. On the left side here, we just have the andesite generator. Uh, that one's pretty easy, just the same thing we've been using. And then last but not least, in the back here, we have one more cobblestone generator. And this is making the iron nuggets that we need. And I was right about the whole seared boss thing on the front of the basin. Uh, we just have this powered, and it will automatically spit out all of the andesite into this casting table here. And all that together, we now have andesite alloy automated. Before we start trying to automate iron, we need to find a way to generate some lava passively. 
That's not going to be too hard though. We just need to pick up some dripstone here. I'm going to use some of these to set up a little dripstone farm. Uh, this is going to be very manual for now, but it'll do the job. The rest of these we're going to use to place above some cauldrons right below some lava. And these are going to very, very slowly drip uh, some lava into these cauldrons which we could pick up with buckets, but instead what we're gonna do is pipe these out with some create pipes. I only had enough iron for two cauldrons, but we're definitely gonna add more of these as we get more. And then I'm just gonna have all of that go into a tank here. And here we go, we've already got a good amount of lava coming in. Unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today's episode though. We'll get these ores automated next time for sure. That's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoy, and I will see you next time.